Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Mayur and Dr. Ajay Shukla in Hormone India for organizing such a wonderful conference. And uh, uh, the topic which I have been asked to speak uh, became very relevant in this present day epidemic uh, of uh, COVID-19 and probably uh, what has seen the, I think, uh, the maximum use of steroid ever done in the world. So let us see how common is the steroid use. At any point of time, around 0.9% of general population may be using corticosteroids with the highest rate, around 2.5% seen with the individuals more than 70 years of age. All, of all, nearly one quarter of patients may need to use corticosteroids for more than six months and widely prescribed because of the anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive property. So why we at all use steroids in, in clinical practice and uh, of all the, because of the immunosuppressive and anti-inflammatory property, it's, it is across the, the disease spectrum it is being used and specifically to the in relation with the endocrinology, it becomes a treatment. It's a direct treatment for adrenal insufficiency in the congenital adrenal hyperplasia and, and all respiratory hematology, rheumatology, dermatology, gastroenterology, and organ transplant, ophthalmology. Across the board, the steroids are being used almost every day, depending on the situation in the variable doses, long-term, short-term steroids, all possible permutation combination. So let us discuss what is the steroid-induced hyperglycemia, use of steroid treatment in people with pre-existing diabetes, resulting in the worsening of glucose control. This is the steroid-induced hyperglycemia. Steroid-induced diabetes is a rise in glucose occurring in people without a known diagnosis of diabetes may or may not resolve when the steroids are withdrawn. What are the risk factors for those uh, at risk, the conditions who are at risk for developing steroid-induced hyperglycemia? So the pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes, a strong family history of type 2 diabetes, previous gestational diabetes, previous impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance, people with polycystic ovarian disease or obesity, ethnic minority groups, and history of hyperglycemia with the steroid use in the past. These are the clinical situations where one is, sub, one is expected to develop uh, steroid-induced hyperglycemia. The few major points where actually glucocorticoids act and they cause steroid-induced hyperglycemia at pancreatic level, it's a pro-apoptopic -apoptop and the leading to progressive beta cell failure. At liver level, it increases gluconeogenesis and decreases insulin sensitivity. At the, it causes lipolysis and decreases the insulin sensitivity, increases the resistance. At muscle level, it decreases the glucose uptake. All similar to type 2 diabetes uh, pathogenesis, capillary recruitment, and also it impairs the incretin response. Now the question comes to how do we manage? Before we start managing, we must know how to monitor it in people without pre-existing diabetes. Monitoring at least once daily, preferably be prior to lunch or evening meal. If blood glucose is more than less than 216 milligram per deciliter, continue to test one daily post breakfast or lunch. If blood glucose reading is more than 216 milligram per deciliter, then the frequency of testing should be increased to four times daily before meals and before bed. And then if glucose is found to be consistently more than 216 milligram per deciliter on two occasions during 24 hours, then the patient should enter the treatment. What about the people with pre-existing diabetes? Test four times day before meals and before bed, irrespective of background diabetes control. If glucose is found to be consistently more than 216 milligram per deciliter on two occasions during 24 hours, then the patient should enter the treatment. Management 
क्राइटेरिया अकॉर्डिंग टू द ज्वाइंट ब्रिटिश डायबिटीज सोसाइटी टू थाउजेंड एटीन गाइडलाइन फॉर दोज यूजिंग बेसल इंसुलिन ओनली कंसिडर स्विचिंग टू मॉनिटरिंग एंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड इंक्रीज द डोज बाई टेन परसेंट एवरी ट्वेंटी फोर टू फोर्टी एट आवर्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन द ग्लूकोज लेवल इन फॉर दोज यूजिंग ट्वाइस डेली प्री मिक्सड इंसुलिन रेजिमेंट टेन परसेंट इंक्रीज इन द मॉर्निंग इंसुलिन डोज शुड बी कंसिडर्ड एवरी ट्वेंटी फोर टू फोर्टी एट आवर्स for those using a multiple dose regimen an increase in the lunch and the evening meal short acting bolus may be appropriate a person should be monitored closely as for uh, for the early morning hypoglycemia if vessel analog insulin is being used steroid induced hyperglycemia therapy non insulin therapies like sulfonylurea pioglitazone metformin can be used in all those who are not critically ill or in the the glycemic excursions are not very high so one can try in the non hospitalized patient once daily in the morning may be best manage the glucose excursion associated with once daily steroid dose but you have to see, seriously monitor for the hypoglycemia event once the the doses of steroids are being reduced or removed for basal human insulin may closely fit the glucose excursion induced by single dose of oral steroid in the morning basal analog insulin may be appropriate if a hyperglycemia is present throughout the day and the multiple daily injection regimen may be appropriate when the multiple doses of oral or shorter acting steroids are give, being given intravenously people in hospital acutely unwell with significantly hyperglycemia are unlikely to achieve glucose control with non insulin therapies this is the schematic presentation how we go about to control the steroid induced hyperglycemia to in the treatment naive in the in the treatment experience group in treatment naive if it is mild if it is in the patients are in day care one can try sulfonylurea or tzds or intermediate acting long acting insulins treatment experience people short acting is corticosteroids use immediate or long acting insulins in the long acting cost corticosteroids intermediate or long acting insulins with the support of plus perineal insulins if required are the treatment of choice there are certain limitations of oral agents effectiveness of various oral hypoglycemic drugs in treatment of new onset glucocorticoid induced hyperglycemia limited efficacy slow onset of action limited or non existent ability to be titrated and action profile of oral hypoglycemic drugs does not coincide with the pattern of steroid induced hyperglycemia so controlling steroid induced hyperglycemia becomes a difficult proposition to using the oral anti hypoglycemic agents why insulin because immediate onset of action easy titration unlimited efficacy and the greater flexibility and predictability the rapid ability to target post prandial hyperglycemia and those can be modified related to patient's oral intake so when to start insulin steroid hyperglycemia fasting glucose more than 126 or glycemia at any time more than 200 mg per deciliter after 2 hours of glucose load then the, if the prandial preprandial glycemia is less than 200 mg without pres, uh, precious diabetes mellitus pre, pre present diabetes mellitus and low dose glucocorticosteroids controlled diabetes with the oral agents can be tried oral hypoglycemic drug like metformin sulfonylurea tzds or dpp4 inhibitor can be tried despite this if there is a persistent hyperglycemia then switch over to insulin in all those where the post prandial pre prandial glycemia is 200 mg or more then the insulins are to be used which insulin therapy to initiate basal insulin may closely fit the glucose excursion induced by single dose or of oral steroid in the morning basal analog insulin may be appropriate if hyperglycemia is present throughout the day and the multiple daily injection regimen may be appropriate when the multiple doses or oral iv steroids are being given steroid induced hyper non insulin therapies given i mean it's a almost recapitulation of the same slide which we have already talked about 
So given once daily in the morning with these doses of steroid in the basal insulin may closely fit the glucose excursion. Basal analog insulin may be appropriate if hyperglycemia is throughout the day and the multiple injections if multiple doses are being given. So I think uh, it's the last slide probably my, of my presentation. As a non-insulin therapies, if the person is on glycolyzide, the morning dose should be increased in 40 milligram increment to maximum dose of 240 milligram. Temporary addition of basal human insulin may be indicated given in the morning. Insulin therapy for those using basal insulin only, consider switching to morning administration and increased dose by 10% every 24 to 48 hours for those using twice daily premix insulin regimen 10% increase in the morning dose should be considered and it retested after 24 to 48 hours for those using a multiple dose regimen an increase in the lunch and evening meal short acting bolus may be appropriate for type 1 people using twice daily premix insulin 10% increase in the morning as with the type 2 diabetes an increase in the lunch and evening meal short-acting bolus insulin doses may be warranted if bolus regimen is utilized. Thank you very much.